Hi guys, I had a discussion in my gym recently about personal trainers and it was shocking for me to find out the rates that the personal trainers charge these days. And the argument that one person made was that if you want the results, you really have no choice but to pay that kind of money. Well, I disagree with that because I believe that you do have a choice. And an alternative way for you to go about it would be to learn about training yourself. Because just like you don't call registered dietitian every time you sit down to have a meal, you shouldn't have to call personal trainer every time you go to the gym. Because I believe that in modern age, everybody should have some basic idea how to keep themselves fit. And knowing that this is for biceps and bench press is for chest is not enough. And that's why I decided to make a video to talk about some of the books that could be helpful for you to learn about training. And these are not going to be the books about how to get six pack in two weeks. Because remember, we are all about getting as big and strong as possible without steroids here. And as I said in one of my previous videos, for you to be able to take your body to an absolute limit, you really need to know what you're doing. And that's why these books are going to be some serious books. And we're going to be looking at them from the following criteria. So number one is pretty straightforward. How informative is the book? Meaning, how much useful information does it contain for our purposes here? And obviously, if the book does not score in this category, that book is not on this list. But there are a couple more things that we have to consider when we're looking at the book. So number two here is how easy it is to comprehend the material. Because let's face it, guys, this is not sports physiology grad school here. We're talking about average people. And even if you are this incredible genius of exercise science, it doesn't help anybody if nobody understands what you're talking about. Number three on this list is practical applications, meaning how easy it is to implement the information that the book contains in actual training. So for example, when I was writing my own book, I was always trying to imagine that if there was a way for me to send one book back in time to when I just started training, what would I want that book to contain? And what material would be the most beneficial? But my book is not going to be part of this discussion for obvious reasons. And as a matter of fact, this is not about me bashing on any of these books to show you how mine is better. The fact that these books are included on this top 10 list means that these are all very good books. So enough of the introduction already, and let's get started. Number 10 on our list is the Weightlifting Encyclopedia. This book covers every single topic related to weightlifting. And even if you are not into weightlifting, there is still plenty of good information in this book for anyone who wants to get big and strong. Now, as far as how easy it is to comprehend the material, this book is not very easy to read. It might not look all that intimidating, but the font is very small and there are almost no illustrations in this book. And also sometimes it feels like the same topic is being beaten into the ground over and over and you are stuck on the same page for days. As far as our last criteria here, aside from very few examples of actual training programs, this book gives almost zero practical recommendations. And let me illustrate what I mean because this will be relevant for at least few more books on this list. I'm not saying that the book should tell you exactly what to do, but I just think that it is much easier to grasp the material when you see some actual examples of what is being discussed. Because otherwise there is really no way for me to know if I understand what the author is trying to explain or my personal interpretation is way off. But nevertheless, number 10 on our list, the Weightlifting Encyclopedia. Number 9 on our list is Super Training. This is another gold mine of information, but I do have to warn you that most of it is on advanced level. So this should probably not be the first book you ever read about strength training. Now as far as how easy it is to comprehend, I have never met anyone who actually enjoy reading this book. It is definitely written in old Soviet Union exercise science style. I had to read books like that back in the day when we didn't have access to anything else. And the reason why they were written in such academic way was because they were meant for coaches. And to be a coach back in the day, you had to have a degree in exercise science, unlike it is now. Now, another reason why 
this book is so difficult to read in my opinion is because the translation seems to be a little rough I took this book with me when I went to Thailand when I was invited to come as a coach with our kickboxing national team and when I was reading it back in the hotel I remember thinking that I would rather be in the ring getting beat up than to read this book now as far as practical applications although this book contains tons of knowledge it is unlikely that you will know exactly what to do at the gym after reading this book because no attempt is being made to connect all the knowledge this book contains with practical applications and the author is being very careful not to give what they call fast food solutions in this book so once again number nine on our list super training number eight on our list is the west side barbell book of methods this book is full of what i call an alternative methodology no other book emphasizes use of chains and bands and also the importance of GPP training to the same extent as this book does. Now as far as how easy it is to comprehend, this book is written in pretty straightforward fashion. Sometimes it does feel like the text is not very well edited and chunks of it are just pasted in a random order. Still however, you will not have nearly as much trouble reading this book as with some other books that we have mentioned so far. As far as practical applications, this book gives fairly decent explanation of how to implement the proposed training methodology. Now the methodology itself has been questioned. It seems to be love or hate when it comes to conjugate system. Some will say that that's the only system that matters, while some will criticize it for lack of specificity and poor carryover to raw power lifting. And I'm not here to persuade you either way. But even if you don't believe in the system as a whole, there are still plenty of very interesting elements to it that could be successfully implemented once you're out of the beginner stages of your career. So once again, number eight on our list, West Side Barbell Book of Methods. Number seven on our list is the science and practice of strength training. This book covers wide range of topics related to training. And in my opinion, the first chapter of this book contains some of the best few pages ever written about strength training anywhere. Now, with that being said, chapter two and three are a straight nightmare. And I'm gonna go as far as saying that most people probably should just skip those two chapters. As far as practical applications, just like super training, this book doesn't give any examples on templates to help you bridge the gap between the theoretical knowledge this book provides and your actual training because if it did this book would score much higher on this list but be it as it may number seven on our list the science and practice of strength training number six on our list is periodization theory and methodology of training another very good book that talks a lot about how to properly structure your training especially in the long term just keep in mind that this book is not only about strength training and it covers multiple athletic abilities such as endurance, speed, agility, and so on. As far as how easy it is to comprehend, although this book is more on the advanced side of things, it is not a very difficult text to get through. The only thing I didn't like was that studies are being referenced within the text. I just don't find that to be necessary. For example, Louis Simmons doesn't have to cite a study in every second sentence of his book of methods that we already covered, for me to take his book seriously. Obviously all these books are written on some kind of empirical experience and if you don't cite studies in your books doesn't mean that everybody's gonna assume that you're just making stuff up. As far as practical applications this book doesn't give you any complete training programs to play with. Still I feel like this book brings you fairly close to being able to implement this knowledge in practice. And as long as you have at least some kind of practical experience, you should be able to connect the dots. So once again, number six on our list, periodization, theory and methodology of training. Number five on our list is the Encyclopedia of Modern Bodybuilding. I saw this very book in the window display of a book thrift store when I was a little kid. And I had to collect money for a very long time to be able to buy it. And once I bought it, I had to sit down at home with a dictionary and try to figure out what this book was talking about. And the reason why I'm telling you this, guys, is to show you how much more we appreciated knowledge back in the day. 
and now that we have access to all this information for some bizarre reason everybody just wants to show up at the gym and make stuff up in any case this book covers full spectrum of topics related to resistant training with the focus obviously being on bodybuilding I also have the new edition of this book and I can tell you that the main difference between the two is that the newer edition has pictures of different bodybuilders in it. This book is very easy to read, but it is a very big book. Still, if you can get through it, you will know a lot about training. As far as practical applications, this book gives you many complete training programs. But we have to take into account that this book is almost as old as I am. Not that I'm that old. But even today's professional bodybuilders don't use training programs of such high volume and frequency as this book recommends. Still, it does a pretty decent job explaining how bodybuilding style training programs are put together. And you're just going to have to make appropriate adjustments to make this information work without steroids. So once again, number five on our list, Encyclopedia of Modern Bodybuilding. Number four on our list is the essentials of strength training and conditioning. This book is designed to help you prepare for the certified strength and conditioning specialist exam and it contains everything a coach should know, starting from sports psychology and all the way to gym layout. The fourth edition of this book also contains few new sections about strongman events, kettlebells and so on. I feel that this book does not emphasize accommodation enough, but still, this is probably one of the most informative books on this list. Then some of you are going to ask, how come it's not number one? And the reason for that lays right here. This book is not easy to read. Look guys, I understand that this book is written for professionals. But I know a few guys with doctorate degrees that didn't make it through this book. It just seems to be unnecessarily complicated. For example, there are only few people in the whole world that probably need to know the biochemistry of ATP production. And those people work in the pharmacology industry and not in strength and conditioning. I understand that it's important to know different metabolic pathways, but does it really have to be this complicated? For example, sports performance training book that is not on this list does a very good job explaining the same topic in simple words. Now, as far as practical applications, this book actually does give various examples to show you how to implement all this knowledge in practice. But you do have to remember that this is written for coaches that work with athletes in various sports. And you will need to make some modifications to make this about being big and strong. So number four on our list, Essentials of Strength Training and Conditioning. Number three on our list is Starting Strength, Basic Barbell Training. This is one of the most popular books in the fitness industry, and deservingly so. This book gives detailed explanation of the technique for all the main exercises. I especially like the last chapter of this book when it talks about programming. I think that's a good example of how scientific principles of strength training can be explained in simple words and without making it sound like you're talking about quantum mechanics. Now do understand that this book is for beginners. And once you're out of that stage, you will probably need another source of information. Now, as far as how easy it is to comprehend, as I already said, this book is written in very simple language. I do feel like sometimes it gets carried away with all the kinesiology. For example, the explanation of squat technique goes for more than 60 pages of biomechanics. But some people actually find it to be helpful, so you will have to see for yourself. Now, as far as practical applications, the program presented in this book will definitely help you to get big and strong without steroids. Yes guys, it's a cookie cutter training program, but that's exactly what the beginner needs. Just like if you don't know how to bake, you will find cookie cutters to be helpful. Which is not to say that a chef in a five star restaurant is going to use cookie cutters. Just like an advanced athlete is not going to use starting strength. But if you came across this book as a beginner, you are in good hands. So once again, number three on our list, starting strength. Number two on our list is Braun by Stuart McRobert. This one is in Russian, but I'll include picture of an English edition somewhere over here. This is by far the most important book that I've read about training. 
Stuart McRobert was one of the first few people who came out and said that training with and without steroids are not as similar as most people would like to believe. And if you don't understand why, you definitely need to read this book. There were few more editions of this book, but I believe that the original one was still the best. If you look at mine, you will see that almost half of the text is underlined. And this book is very easy to read. There are no graphs, no formulas, no fancy terminology. As far as practical applications, after reading this book, you should have a pretty good idea what to do at the gym. Because it was specifically written to help you get big and strong without steroids. With that being said, we have to take into account that this book was written more than two decades ago and it might not contain some of the newest methodology. This book is all about Mike Manzer's style in frequent training sessions and long cycles of linear progression with small weight increases. And by now we know that there are also other good ways to structure your training. But nevertheless, very condensed, very good source of information. And number two on our list, Braun by Stuart McRobert. Number one on our list is practical programming for strength training. I love everything about this book, but if I had to highlight one thing for you guys, that would be how this book outlines the distinct differences between training of beginners, intermediates, and advanced. Even if that's the only thing you'll take away from reading this book, you will still be able to look at the training process from a very different perspective. And this book is also very easy to read. Some people do get lost in the intermediate section because of all the variation it contains. But all that information will be very useful when we come to practical applications. Because this book does give you many complete training programs. We only have to keep in mind that the training programs contained in the advanced section of this book will probably be on the extreme side of things for the drug-free athlete. And another thing to keep in mind is that this book is definitely geared towards powerlifting and weightlifting. And even though that style of training will get you big besides being strong, we can't completely discount the usefulness of bodybuilding methodology. Then some of you might ask, how come there were so few bodybuilding books on this list? And I'll tell you the reason. And the reason is that the science has left the world of bodybuilding and it has been replaced by I go by how I feel nonsense. And in an attempt to cover up for such lack of methodology, excessive use of acronyms has taken place. Every time I open Muscle and Fitness magazine, there is a new program based around some stupid acronym. And I hate to say this because I grew up reading magazines such as Flax and Muscle and Fitness. But with the way things are, even if you are a bodybuilder, you are better off learning about training from a book like this than from any of the current bodybuilding literature. So once again, number one on our list and my personal favorite, Practical Programming by Mark Repito. So that's my personal top 10. And I just wanted to make you guys aware of some of the good books out there. Because there is really no good other way for you to research this topic. And relying on Amazon reviews is probably not the best way to go about it. Because everybody's an expert on internet. But then you go to the gym and nobody knows what's going on. And if it did seem that I was critical of some of these books, that was because I wanted to give you guys some idea what you're getting into. Because a lot of people buy these books and never even make it halfway through. Because as I said, all of these are very serious books. But the prices the personal trainers charge these days should be good enough incentive for you to start looking into some of them. And also keep in mind that there is a chance that some of those trainers have not read a single book on this list. Just something for you to think about. But that's it for today guys and I'll see you next time.